friends, it's Taki Dares. Yes, you read that title correctly. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about YouTubers that I hate and YouTube channels that I don't like. Cue that transition. Okay, so whenever we think of YouTuber, streamer, or any online content creator, there's a lot of different words that come up in our head when we think of that, besides money. <laughs> You probably think fake videos, bad apology videos, controversy, tea spilling, drama, whatever it is. I don't really blame anybody for thinking these things because as somebody that's been doing this for nine years, I can guarantee you that there's a lot more drama behind the scenes than what you see online. And believe me, a lot of content creators are sick and tired of it and I'm one of them, hello. So I have one, two, three, four YouTubers that I'm going to share. Some of these people, I'm not even really gonna call them YouTubers. They're just like legitimately horrible people that like happen to have a YouTube channel. And some of them, I hate to say, are actually YouTubers, but luckily I am going to tell you that most of these, actually all of these YouTubers are either dead, in jail, and or their YouTube channels have been deleted. Okay, so let's get into it. The first YouTube channel that I'm going to show you, literally the name is Sagawa Issei, Issei Sagawa. I have talked about this guy probably like at least two or three times on this channel. He's one of the most infamous criminals in Japan, and I know that Vice made like a documentary on him on their channel years ago. But basically this is a Japanese man who went over to France and shot and ate a Dutch woman's body. And he was able to walk out a free man because of legality reasons between Japan and France. It was really messed up. And I actually made a video not only on him, but I interviewed one of his friends of 10 years. That one was really crazy. I don't even wanna get into that. I lost my mind in that video, if you guys wanna go watch that. So Issei Sagawa became very infamous for that crime that happened, I wanna say 80s or 90s. Cut to like 20 or 30 years later, he creates a YouTube channel and it's just named after him. And there's only one single video on it. And this is why I can't really say that he's a YouTuber. He's just a terrible human being that just happened to have a YouTube channel. And that one YouTube video, kind of talks about his reflections of the crime that he committed, but not really. ま、ほとんど一応それはあくまで表現のようなものですね。そんなまま終わりたくないとは思いますけど、間違いなくそう終わるでしょう。それが僕は僕に与えられた最大の罰だと今思っています。he kind of very vaguely goes over it. He sort of words it as everyone's still talking about this thing that I did years ago that's already done now. Now I know that Vice made a documentary on him, but that was more about him talking about his thoughts during the crime. That was insane. But this video that he did was very raw and it wasn't him trying to say sorry at all. I mean, it's already a little too late for that. I don't even think you really could if you tried, dude. But he just kind of said, well, we all know this thing that I did and I'm just gonna tell you after all this time, yeah, I agree. I don't really think that I'm meant to live. I don't think that I'm a human being. I really don't think I should be part of this earth. So I'm just kind of like waiting for death to arrive. He did pass away over a year and a half ago in November. So the second YouTube channel that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today is a man named Mr. Anime. I remember him from once upon a time ago. He is known on YouTube as Mr. Anime, this self-styled film critic whose videos have been watched more than a million times. Hi, Mr. Anime here. And if you saw the title of the video, you know what this is all about. It's Mr. Anime. Or you can call me Trey. You can call me the guy that does the video game reviews, or you can call me the guy that does all the gun stuff now. 22-year-old is now in jail under $5 million bond and a suicide watch. He is charged with gunning down his school teacher father, his mother, and his older brother, all at the family's home. This is uh, Waller, just out of Houston in Texas. Okay, so a lot of us anime YouTubers, or 
Hi, I used to be one. <laughs> a lot of people in the anime YouTube community are not exactly the proudest to say that this whole genre of YouTube was pretty much fathered by this guy. Mr. Anime was very well known for a few anime reviews and a couple of anime skits that he made. And at the time, he grew a pretty dedicated fan base and then I was one of them. So Mr. Anime's real name is Trey Sessler and his crime deals with murdering his entire family. And how he did this was that for one of them, he lured his mother into the garage and shot her in the chest, shot his brother in the head. And when his dad woke up to go see what all the ruckus was about, Trey then shot his own father. After that, he then destroyed the entire house killing his pets and then he collected all that ammunition that he had stored up and was planning to do a mass murder at a school but for whatever reason that plan to shoot up the school didn't actually go through and he went back to the house and then was arrested afterwards he was sent to life in prison without the possibility of parole and that is how anime youtube was born his official youtube channel at the time was called lens cat productions and since then it's been deleted however all of his videos have been archived on youtube and on other websites but if you do look him up there's like a another YouTube channel that has that name. I'm, I don't know if they did that on purpose, but just know that whatever you're finding that says Mr. Anime, that's not him. I guess one of the reasons that this was also so shocking was because anime YouTube in general is already so niche, let alone back then, pretty much anyone that even knew Mr. Anime probably interacted with him in some way, whether through comments or a collab or whatever, because at the time it wasn't really that hard to communicate with each other as it is today. So when this whole thing came out, it wasn't really fans being being shocked at their favorite YouTuber committing these crimes. It was more like an entire community had been affected by this. For a while, I think it probably made anime YouTubers look really bad, but since then things have progressed in a lot of different ways, but it's just kind of really unsettling to this day to know that that's where the roots are. Since then, his YouTube channel has been deleted, unlike our next YouTuber, Pedro Rodriguez Filo. Depois que você saiu, você foi atrás dele. Não, não tá... pra matar na cadeia. Foi na cadeia? Foi. Eu tava matando a cadeia, não foi na rua, eu tava preso já. Eu fiquei 42 anos preso. Aí vocês nem chegaram a conversar lá dentro, já chegou. Não, eu tava no Pavilhão Nova, eu vi isso marear. Aí já chegou. Eu vi isso marear, porque eu tinha muitos crimes na comarca de Mutim das Cruz. Eu tinha muitos crimes, entendeu? So if there's anything that Pedro Rodriguez is known for today, it's either A, being a YouTuber, or B, being a Brazilian serial killer that took the lives of 71 people. He also claimed to have taken the lives of 100 drug dealers, and he was sentenced to 35 years in prison, which honestly, in my opinion, isn't really that long considering what he did. I mean, you had Mr. Anime who got life in prison for killing his family. So I have a feeling that Pedro Rodriguez probably got only 35 years because all of his victims had to do with gang violence and everyone that he shot or killed was within that circle doing similar if not worse things. His first release was in 2007 but in 2011 Rodriguez was imprisoned again on charges of inciting a riot and deprivation of liberty and he was sentenced to eight years in prison but was released in 2018 after seven years of good behavior. So this man is a serial killer and as far as the nitty-gritty details all you have to know is that it's all related to gang violence. That's basically the entire story, is that he was just rivaling with other gangs and then it got caught up in his life to the point that even his own wife that was carrying his child was also murdered by rival gangs. And then he created a YouTube channel to try and preach why people shouldn't go down the same route that he did. Can't really say that I hate this man for doing that. I mean, great and all, but it's, it's still... Hmm. A rival gang then took the life of Pedro Rodriguez. Even though Pedro Rodriguez isn't alive, his YouTube channel is, with all of the content still up there. He claims after all of the gang violence, he converted into Christianity, found himself and wanted to preach to younger people not to follow down the same route that he did. But I feel like it was already too little too late. He was already so caught up in that gang life that even though he already turned on a new leaf, Another rival gang just seemed to hold that grudge and take his life last year, March 2023. It says here he had over 251,000 subscribers and totaled views of over 36.4 million views. That's that's not bad. Up until this video, I had actually never heard of Pedro Rodriguez, but I have heard of a lot of different content creators, including our final YouTuber, Steven McCullough, who online went by Vote Saxon 07. In February 2023, Steven McCullough was found guilty for murdering his girlfriend, Natalie McNally. And the way he went about this is probably the most sinister way that I've ever seen anybody use their platform. So basically what he did to try and hide his tracks before murdering his girlfriend was that he planned 
to have a stream that would happen at the same time of the murder. The way he did this was that he pre-recorded the stream and sent that out live and just pre-recorded himself making just very generic replies as if he was reading the chat when really it was all just ahead of time. And he was kind of overcompensating information as well, which actually made him look even more guilty. Um, and also, if I go on my phone for too long, I'll end up just scrolling through TikTok and the amount of time that I've lost scrolling through TikTok is unbelievable. So yeah, phones away. Can't look at the live chat for some bloody reason because if I do, it makes the whole thing freeze and OBS just screws up. Right, yeah, so um, I need to get my anxiety about whether or not the stream will crash just out of the way, otherwise it'll affect the whole bloody thing. But yes, um, if you have questions, comments, opinions, anything like that, tough. <laughs> but he pre-recorded this and sent it live as he was actually out there trying to go to his girlfriend to murder her. So that way, during investigations, he could just say, oh, I was streaming during that time. I had nothing to do with it. But police are smart and they figured out that, hey, you know what's even weirder is that the VOD is completely deleted. Like that stream wasn't saved. So obviously there's something really sus about that. And also within the stream, there's actually a point that he even smirks just saying his girlfriend's name. Yeah, that's, that's physics. That's, that's what would happen in the real world. Absa fucking notly. <laughs> Absa fucking notly. And this is personally the first time that I've ever seen someone pre-record a stream in order to do something like this. I don't think there's been a sentencing yet, but it does say here that the case will be reviewed in March, which is exactly where we're in right now. So I'm expecting that we're probably gonna get some results fairly soon. I know I really disappointed someone out there who's looking forward to a real life creator clash with me, but I, I really, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy living my life, making content with the best t-shirt that I've ever found on the internet. And that's all that I wanna live my life doing and I'm not gonna ruin all of it by creating unnecessary drama or unnecessary crimes like any of these people did. Appreciate you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye!